This is what you should know before you date a man. Before going on a date, especially when it's expected to culminate in marriage, there are certain things you must know. You must know or understand first of all that life is so precious to be left for chance or to do trial and error with it. A marriage happens to be one of the spaces of life that can make or mar the whole of a person's life if a wrong choice is made. But where and when the right choice is made and the marriage is properly coupled and constituted, life is like heaven or earth. Lifespan can even be lengthened by the reason of marriage enjoyability, peace of mind, and peace at home. But when and where wrong choices are made and the marriage is wrongfully considered at times, with the wrong motive, it can ruin a person's entire life and living. Because she may have to live with it for the rest of her life, even in the event that she untangled through a divorce, the reminiscences of the ugly experience may still hurt for life. And she may have to live the rest of her life in regret and unpleasant evocative memories of ugly and undesirable past. And such a scenario could make one's rest of life very unenjoyable, hellish, unpleasant and unpalatable. In some cases, it could even shorten a person's life due to the emotional torment that it presents, or physical battery as it were in some cases. So due to the enormous unpleasant consequences of bad marriages, opens of divorce especially in our own part of the world, it therefore calls for carefulness and caution in making marriage choices because it is very crucial to life and living. And over the years, a lack of understanding of the purposes of marriage has been discovered to be one of the bedrock of fellows of marriages. Some think that marriage is for economic convenience, other think it is a form of social association, and some think it is a kind of social empowerment or job opportunity. Just like it is popularly said, when the purpose of a thing is not understood, abuses become inevitable. And at some other times, where the purpose seems to be known, the lack of wisdom and diligence to apply it is what usually leads to fellows. But what really is the purpose of marriage as conceived by the institutor of marriage, God? Because the correct understanding and rightful application of God's prescriptions for the realization of the purposes have the capacity to make any marriage work enjoyable and the home will become heaven or earth. God made the purposes of marriage and procedures for the realization abundantly and unambiguously clear in the scriptures, the Bible, which is where to access the will and mind of God. The Bible, which is where God's mind and will can be accessed, stated unequivocally that the primary purpose of marriage first and foremost from the mind of the Creator and the Institute of marriage is to handle or defeat loneliness. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verses 18, the Bible says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help made for him. So, point number one is that marriage is meant to handle or solve the problem of loneliness. This is before any other follow-up purposes like procreation, partnership, help mate, and so on. Therefore, before commencing a date or dating, it is pertinent and expedient that you understand that the primary purpose of marriage is to handle or cure loneliness before any other follow-up purposes. And as such, it should be noted and consented before the commencement of dating. You should discuss and agree that you are going to have or create time for each other, for play, discussion, and other emotional satisfying activities. because. Any marriage that still sustains loneliness after its contraction is already heading for collapse because it is already going against the divinely ordained basic plan and purpose of marriage. And any marital venture not built on the established foundation, which is the word of God, is bound to fail or collapse. You can be in marriage and still remain or act like a bachelor or a spacer by either always being obsessed and preoccupied with people without, either on Facebook, Instagram, television and so on, at the expense of people within, which are your partner and children who are seeking your attention, especially when you are at home. 
and you still expect to elicit a friendly and positive response or cooperation from them, whereas you have ignored and treated them without care and attention. Loneliness or lack of communication or poor communication is the poor cause of failures in marriages. So do not date any man whom from your sincere assessment won't have your time or that will deprive you of your nuptial privileges and benefits or rights with whatever pretense or unfounded excuses or who will feel too big to play with you because marriage is supposed to be for partners who understand and respect each other. If he cannot play with you then, he cannot be your partner. Secondly, marriage is meant to compliment you or to make you better. So, anybody that has no potential to compliment or make you better, don't date him. Because marriage by God's original design and ordination is for your compliment or completion. That is why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Here we saw how Adam felt a sense of completion with the introduction of it to him by God. So marriage must be seen with the same complementary and completion eyes, like in the case of Adam, as it is evident in his statement and it is meant to be for life while you both live. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12, the Bible says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had no another to help him up. Verse 11, Again, if two lie together, then they have hit, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So marriage is meant to better you and not to worsen you. But to achieve this divine and noble objective of God, there is a need for alignment with certain divine principles and guidelines. God created more things in twain, and the other half is meant to complete the other half and it is supposed to be for life and not something that you go into test and come out of it in a hit or at will. No, it is a divine contract ordained by God himself. In Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, God said that he hates divorce. It says in verse 16, For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away, for one covered violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, Take heed to your spirit, that ye did not treacherously. When these guidelines are followed, marriage becomes enjoyable. But when they are ignored and dreaded, marriage becomes a burden and a life-threatening adventure, which will, instead of bringing the intended companionship, become a burden and an entanglement that each partner begins to look for an escape route to unentangle himself or herself from it. The third thing that you must know or understand before embarking on a date of marriage is that it takes work to make the marriage work. It takes work to work out a beautiful marriage or a happy home. Love is essential in relationship or marriage, but love alone, as many have propounded, is not all there to make a marriage work and build a happy home. Wisdom, knowledge, and work are also required. And remember, wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. So always learn what makes home joyful, enjoyable, healthy, and apply it. Fourthly, before dating, you should also know that marriage is not an institution of selfishness, but a place of sacrifice for the sustenance of peace and conviviality. Any relationship without sacrifice to keep it healthy and moving won't take long before it will begin to fade till it hits the road. So marriage is a delicate relationship and should be seen and treated as such. Because if not carefully handled, it may go bad and may collapse. The scripture says in the book of Malachi chapter 2 verses 15 to 16, God made husband and wife to become one body and one flesh for his purpose, so that they will have children that are true to God. So be careful and do not break your promises to your wife you married when you were young. The Lord God of Israel says, 
I hate divorce, and I hate people who do cruel things as easily as they put on clothes, says the Lord All-Powerful. So be careful and do not break your trust. God expects us to treat our partner with carefulness, just as we treat relationships that we value so much and wishes to keep. Fifthly, as a young lady or a man who is considering going into dating, you must know that roles must be defined and assigned in marriage. You should be assertive and definitive in role assignment and allocation. Assumption at times could breed confusion and misunderstanding. Hence the need for assignment of roles and definiteness in roles. Sixthly, and very crucial for the sustenance of every relationship and marriage. Love and faithfulness are next to none in every relationship that will stand the test of time. In Colossians chapter 3 verses 14 concerning love, the Bible says, Even more than all this, clothe yourself in love. Love is what holds you all together in perfect unity. And in Sons of Sons chapter 8 verse 7, the Bible says, Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the flood drown it. If a man will give all the substance of his house for love, it will utterly be condemned. And in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 8, most importantly of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sin. Here in these verses, love has been shown to be the pivotal force driving every relationship. This door is not without prejudice to work as cited earlier because even love is also a work. It takes effort which is work to love. I pray for you, you shall not fail in your marriage. Divorce shall not be your portion. Your marriage shall be heaven or earth. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Thank you so much for watching our video. We want to give you another interesting video to watch next. But before then, if you are new here, consider subscribing. You will be the first to receive our video whenever we upload one. Here is another video titled, God Will Vindicate You. Carefully handpicked for you to watch next. God bless you.